I'm Susan and we're in the long arm studio again today and we're going to be working with some custom quilting design as you can see today we've got a lot of challenges going on with this quilt it's not one we can do edge to edge for instance the the trees are 3d they're actually folded so we're going to design a pattern uh on pro stitcher to stitch up the center as well as to branch out at different lengths to lock down those folded pieces. Even though they're caught in the quilt, you still want to lock this down a bit when you're stitching. I don't want to stitch the uh, trunks of the trees, but I do have little package designs to go underneath, and then we're stitching the background. So lots of fun things going on with there. I've got a full border that goes completely around my quilt, and this is a square quilt. It's roughly 62 by 62, and we've got individual borders again i don't want to be stitching down my folded pieces here but i want to make sure that when i've done they're going to lay correctly so i have to make sure that the the raw edge underneath is folded in the proper direction i think we're going to stitch that down too besides doing a uh, uh border i think we're i think i don't know we might be doing some fun stuff here there is a, a gingerbread uh men design in pro stitcher that i thought might go good with with all the cooking uh, print pattern on the outside border. So that's our layout for today of what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start now. And I've got the design I've selected for my border on the screen. Now it's candy canes, which again, I, that was in the uh, Pro Stitcher. So this is going to be a fun, fun design to do. There are candy canes in the print. It reminds me of Christmas. Uh, anyway, I like candy canes, like peppermint. So we're going to make this fit our layout here. So what I'm going to do is I've pulled up my design. I'm now going to go to area. And my, my borders are pretty square. But just to be safe, we will choose the multi-point design uh, feature or the multi-point position for area. And the first thing we're going to do is slide over again to the edge of my quilt. Now, since this is a custom design, whereas on the edge I go just off the fabric, on my custom design, especially for borders, I pull in about a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch or so in from the edge so that my stitching is all on the border. And when I do my binding, it's not going to be covered, covering that pretty edge of the stitching. So I've started right off here at the far top left corner. I'm going to hit multi point. Okay. And then I can, because we've got this laid out here. I'm going to slide all the way down to just inside the top right corner. You can't quite see it. There we go. I don't have a cameraman. I'm my cameraman. So this is what it has to be taking step by step. Okay. So I'm going to slide all the way down here, hit multi point again, bring it down forward to the top where I want to end it. Now, I do have another border going down here sideways, but I know that it's going to fit because, like I said, it's perfectly square. And these designs will mesh without having to be a corner. So I'm just going to do right uh, straight to the edge. So here's my next point. Slide back here. Now, if you feel you're not perfectly square, you can always stop in the middle and take a extra point just to be on the safe side. And we'll slide back over here, up here, and just inside the edge again. And hit multi-point again. And then I've got my border layout. I'm going to refresh the screen so that you can see. There is my border. All laid out on my screen. Here is my design. And I'm going to do repeats. Now I want to do roughly one repeat per tree and I've got six trees in a row so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to repeat and I want to do horizontal and we're going to just increase this by six trees and that's six repeats okay make sure you hit point to point and we've got our design we've got our border now I'm going to go to modify I'm going to select my skew and I'm going to select border skew option Okay, if you don't have that as a feature offered in Pro Stitcher, you may want to update your version. 
I am working with, I believe it's 0 0.06 or 05. Well, we can double check. I can go up here to information and we can go to about. And there you can see my, my, uh, my version here, it says is 5.08. I was off a couple. So you can check your version, download the update at the ProStitcher website, and get started with having that border skew. You're going to appreciate that because it actually fills in all the areas very nicely. I'll just zoom in so you can see it. Now my candy canes are squished a little bit, but they still look like candy canes. They don't look so out of sorts that it's not going to work. So we're ready to go ahead and stitch. That's our first one. But before we do, go back over and baseline. You're going to hear me say this a lot. Once you get your design laid out, make sure you baseline. And then you're going to go to File. And we're going to Save. And you want to save the workspace. That's the area and the design. You can save it under Candy Cane. Or you can save it at the default setting that it brings up. Whatever you want to do. Then when we get to the bottom of our quilt, we're already going to have our layout done. So I don't have to do anything. And since the candy canes are both up and down, I won't even have to rotate it. But I'll have my border already laid out in the correct size. I can resize it if necessary. Because, But I don't think the border on the other side is going to change very much because the, the width of the sashing is all the same. But we'll go and double check that when we get there. Make sure we do another area layout. But we have the designs already saved, ready to go. And I know they're going to match. So that's how you're going to do your custom border layout. Let's start. Side borders. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is going to do a two corner uh, area. And the reason I want to do a two corner area is because we're only going to do one repeat at a time. One repeat actually works the same size as the block. Remember we had six designs and we have six trees. So I know it's going to be per block. So I want to make sure that it's going to be, my area is going to be exactly the same size as a block. So let me go back over here. You can see my design area. I'm going to choose area and this time I'm going to do two corner. So there's one there. Drop down here to the bottom of my square. Do it again. And I've got my my area all set to go so now I just need to pull up my designs. so I'm going to go to file and design and all my designs are already listed here so I don't have to worry about where things are going to be and so forth so it's my the design I chose was peppermint palace and there's my embroidered design but I need to fit it into here in order to do that I'm going to go to modify and we're going to rotate the design. My little rotation design up sh options show on the far right. I'm just going to touch 45 to the right twice. And then I'm going to click on skew. And we're going to go to border skew. And there we pop right in. So I've got my design set and ready to go. So since the machine will automatically move to that position, we're going to go ahead and just move it up to the top and we're going to go ahead and stitch out the border. Okay, here's a really good tip or trick or technique that you might want to do. Since I'm having to repeat this design each time that I advance the quilt and I'm not able to continue it all the way down the length of the quilt, I could basically turn the quilt too if I wanted to after I got everything else done. But what I've done is placed a washout marker on the last stitch here so that when I have advanced the quilt and I'm ready to go on to the next part of the design, I can start right where I left off. If you don't want to do this as you're working through your quilt, you can take the quilt off the frame, rotate it, and do the border again, doing each side all at one time. Entirely up to you. Don't miss my other YouTube videos on long arm quilting, sewing, and crafting. And make sure you get today's download on all the tips, tricks, and techniques. Here's another tip I'm going to give you. And I find this beneficial to me uh, when I'm trying to think through a lot of this stuff. And find all the wonderful designs that you have. When you go into your design 
catalog that you've got here of all the different design folders and so forth. What I have done is as I've opened a lot of the Christmas designs, I've gone and I've saved them into my own folder. You've got a little plus on a folder here and you can just touch that name your folder and then as you open the designs you can start saving them and I've found all these wonderful designs plus a few that I purchased online and put them into a Christmas folder. Now when I want to go do my next Christmas quilt and I've got a couple more to do I'm going to have all the designs that I used in this quilt laid out. You can work it by project. You can do this ahead of time and put it on your flash drive and access your flash drive. Right now we're on the C drive I don't have my flash drive in there. On the back of your tablet, on the, the base for your tablet, you do have two USB ports. I can go down here now to my D drive. There it is right there at the bottom. And I can access different designs here. Now I, I have done a backup because your computer doesn't have, when you do the simulator, your computer does not have the designs in the simulator. So you will need that flash drive that came with Pro Stitcher with the designs on it and use that to access your designs. Now I have taken the glide foot off my machine and I'm going to install the ruler table. Oops, there we go. Slides right into place just like that nice and snug so it won't fall off and I've gone and attached my ruler foot as well because I on, on when I'm going to be doing some with the little uh, the little oh, I guess they're peppermint wheels it's the only thing I can think of these little flippy flop things as I want to stitch them down I want to make sure I get a nice straight edge so I'm going to be going through and just stitching through like this right up against my ruler now I've got my Janome straight edge ruler um, that you can get from your dealership. Do check your dealership for all your optional accessories that are available for your machines. Uh, it's always helpful to have them. You never know when you're going to need a special accessory and I'm a firm believer if the machine's got a ruffle, ruffler for it, I'm buying it. I'm going to make sure I have everything that I need so that when I go to quilt or craft, I have that tool and I don't have to wait for my dealer to open. Also, you want to make sure you take advantage of all the classes they offer at your dealership. Uh, if they don't, make sure you can get online, uh, like here at YouTube and my YouTube channel, and we'll show you exactly what you need to do. Don't forget the Janome website either, as it also has wonderful places for you to learn and pick up tips. Now, I think I am going to do the gingerbread man. It's a, it's a gingerbread man and a lady. And let's see if I can find it. I did pull it up. Okay. And I am going to do the gingerbread people, I think, on the uh, outer border. And in my corner, because I've got a nice square here, there is like a, a peppermint wheel that I think kind of blends in with all of this. You've got peppermint candy shown here on, on the print. Uh, and with the peppermint twist things here. I just think it'll be really cute to have like a little peppermint candy stitching in my in my uh, cornerstone of my quilt quilt top. So my four corners are going to have the little candy here and then in this section here we're going to be doing the gingerbread man and gingerbread girl and it has a heart and so forth there. So pick up the cookie theme that is in the uh, the border print. Uh, before we actually get to the block. So I'm going to go ahead and do my next border and we're going to resize that the same way we do everything else. I'm going to go ahead and mark my area off. Now I have also, if you've noticed, I've picked up another optional accessory for the machine. This is the laser pointer. And it, don't get it confused with the pointer that goes with the pantographs with the rear set of handlebars. This is not that. This actually plugs into the side of your uh, electronic screen and then it's going to you can position this where and stick it wherever you like comes with instructions but that's going to help you identify the actual corner or marking of your block and for custom work like this it is essential to have any kind of a tool that's going to help you and benefit your quilting this is one that you're going to use a lot I didn't have it on in the edge to edge there was no need to but if you want to, you could use it there too. But I'm going to do this. And again, I'm going to do my straight edge across here and make sure that these are all stitched 
so that they're stitching down correctly so I catch that that raw edge so that these lay flat when they're finished the quilting so I'm going to do those with my ruler and the first thing I'm going to do here and do the quilting off it to the edge so my Janome ruler nice straight edge has you it's hard to see but you if you get it you does have different lines and so forth that you can follow and they're a quarter inch which makes it very easy the edge of your foot is quarter of an inch so when you're doing your stitching I want to stitch right down the stitch in the ditch okay your table makes it easy because now I can lay this out and I can just do a straight line right across there I'm going to continue it on through here and I'm going to have a nice uh, my pin pinwheel is going to look like a pinwheel I didn't want to tack these down because it's part of the fun of this particular quilt it's the whimsy of it is to have it as in a 3d so I want to make sure that stays that way don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner so you can catch my next video on long arm quilting okay I've already advanced my quilt and we're ready to do uh, the repeats on the border when we first opened the candy cane design we saved that so we're going to go to file design and I'm going to find my peppermint border size which is what I named it and there is the design that I chose to do on my border here and if you remember we placed a blue dot which is the ending point of the previous stitch Let's see if we can get that down there so you can see it yeah so there's my blue dot so what I'm going to do in order to align the stitch to my uh, fabric and my stitching, I'm going to place my machine over the blue dot. Then in Pro Stitcher, I'm going to go to uh, Modify, Reposition, and I want to put the start point of that design to where my machine is aligned. I can go forward and check to make sure that it's going to fit where it's supposed to and align properly and then I'm ready to stitch out the single repeat. Now that it's finished stitching I want to make sure that I mark the end of the stitching so I can continue when I rotate or advance my quilt. So I'm using a washout marker and I'm just marking where my thread is for my stitching to make sure that I get the correct position when I do my next one. Okay, we're going to move on to designing our tree block. It's going to take multiple steps. We'll be saving different parts at different times and bringing them back in together. But you're going to learn how to crop the inside out like around an applique so you'll have just stitching on the background you're going to learn how to eliminate part of a design and create a whole new design from an individual piece and then we're going to do a recording to create a brand new design that is not in the machine so to start we're going to create the background stitching for the tree because I want this to be different from the actual tree remember this is folded fabric so I don't want to stitch it completely flat I don't want to stitch over that to the edges I'm going to do a design that will enhance the folding so what we're going to start with is just tracing the outline of our block so I'm going to go to my area tab and I'm going to do a multi point because like most people my squares are not perfectly square so we're just going to do a multi point around all four corners now you'll notice here I've got pins on my quilt because I do have those little free uh, floating uh, triangles and I've gone ahead and pinned them out of my way so I make sure I don't stitch them down okay so here's my multi point oh I went too far on that one back it up undo and we're gonna put this one back up here where it belongs okay there is my block all laid out for my tree now I'm going to go and select my design so I'm going to go to file design and I'm going to go to open and my Christmas designs remember I created my own folder so I'm pulling everything out of the same folder I'm not having to go look for individual pieces 
And I kind of like this squirrel design. Now it's not a Christmassy kind of a design, but I like the background. It's kind of happy, but it's got enough stitching so that when I get the background stitch, the tree that isn't stitched is going to pop up. So I like this. Now, I don't like the fact that my start and stop are at the top of my block. I want it at the bottom because I'm going to be adding stitch uh, another design underneath this to create a new block. So this is the first part of the design. So we're going to go in here to modify and I'm going to uh, rotate the design and I'm going to flip vertically. This puts my, my start and stop at the, ba at the base of my design so that when I do this this piece here and we're going to skew, skew this in and border skew it's going to fill my design area okay and I'm going to add another piece at the bottom under the tree that's going to be packages and I'll show you that in a minute okay so I've got this here with the right size once I've laid this out I'm going to go ahead and touch baseline that's going to save that size and the skewed area and so forth because I want to eliminate the area line that's marked around that because we're going to create a new area and that's going to be the area of the tree itself I don't want to stitch through this so I have to take it out of the middle so to do that I'm going to go back into my multi point and I'm just going to map out my tree of where I don't want it to stitch and we got that right there okay there's the part that I don't want stitched so I'm going to go to modify crop I'm going to choose my edges because I don't want to jump stitch over the tree I want to stitch around the tree so I'm going to choose edges and I want to clear the inside that leaves it completely free from the inside okay so now that I've got that I'm going to baseline again okay so we've got that cleared now we're going to clear go back to area and we're going to clear the area and there you can see where I actually have the stitching done now we're going to add another area to this I've got underneath the tree this is going to be the second part of our design so I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to start tracing my area again again multi point so I'm going to go to one going to slide over here this is under the tree where we're going to put packages because you've got to have Christmas packages and right down into my corner remembering I've got the pins holding my triangles out of the way and the last one over here okay so we're going to go ahead and go to file and I'm going to go to design and I'm going to go open back into my Christmas folder again now I've got a package design where did that go there it is right there and we've got this now this is way too I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see it there got the package design now I I love this design I think it's a really fun design but I'm having a problem with the fact that this design is got way too much if I go to borders if I go back in here to modify and I'm going to skew this right in here you can see you can't even see it as to what's being done it, it looks a mess so rather than do that let's undo that go back to full screen okay rather than do that I'm just going to take this first little package out and I'm going to work with that package now to do that I'm going to slide my machine over and I want to take that little spacer too so I'm going to have there we go okay so I'm going to slide this over to the part of the design that has that space in it we're going to go back over to pro stitcher we're going to go to new start new end let's move you over so you can see a little bit better there we go so we're going to go over to new start new end and I'm going to touch new end I've now moved my end position from over here to the edge uh, just after the first package so now that I've got that done I'm going to go back to modify we're going to crop this just like we cropped out the tree but this time we're going to crop I'm going to crop the end 
So I've just eliminated it. I've gotten one package. We're going to baseline again. So we hold that package. And I want to do a repeat package. So we're going to have lots of presents under our tree, but we're going to uh, just represent that with four. So I'm going to go back over to repeat, do horizontal, and I'm going to make sure I've got four trees, four packages going here. So I've got four packages all nice in a row. Baseline again. And now we're going to skew that into that area. So we go modify, go back to skew, border skew. And now we have packages, let's see here, we have packages under our tree. There. So you can see. Now, they're a little squishy, but that's okay. Good things come in small packages. So here's our <laughs> wonderful little packages. Now, I've got one more step to finish my block. And that is going to be to create a new stitch on the center of the tree itself to lock this in place so it's not completely free. I want, because once it comes off the frame, of course, it's going to loosen up. And then I'm going to have this floppy piece of fabric there, and I don't really want to do that. So we are going to stitch something on it, but I want a representation of the tree. I don't want the background. I don't want the packages. I What I want is just a representation of the tree. So we're going to record our stitching. I'm not going to actually stitch, you can, but I'm going to show you a really fun way to do this. So now that we've baselined this, okay, that solids that, we're going to go to area and we're going to clear the area. Now we're ready to go on with, and I'm just going to pan this up a little bit so you can see. There we go. So we're going to record making our tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the position I want to start at, which is going to be like the center, just above the top of the, the base of the tree. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go up, and I'm going to branch out. So we're going to get some nice stitching. So in my Pro Stitcher, there we go. In my Pro Stitcher, I'm going to go over here, and we have a record icon. Now, you, like I said, you can record your actual stitching, your free motion, simply by touching the record button over here. But I'm going to do recording by mark. So, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to touch mark at the base of my tree. Now, I've got the representation here that you can see. I'm going to move my machine up to the top of my tree. Now, I'm not going all the way up. I'm, I'm leaving some space because I want to leave some of this free, but I don't want to leave it all free. I want to tack it down. So I'm making a second mark. Making a second mark simply by touching mark. Now I'm going to move straight down that line. And I've got my grid back here so I can see just exactly where I'm, I'm positioning. And I'm going to do another mark. Then I'm going to go slightly to the right, yeah, just a little bit, okay. And then I'm going to go back over here to the left, the same amount. Then I'm going to come back to the center. I'm going to slide down a little bit more. I'm going to do three branches, so I want the last one to be about here. So we're going to split that, say about there. Good one, Katie. And we've got company. <laughs> Second mark here. Slide over to the side about the same distance again. Do another mark. Back to center. Slide down to my last positioning. Over to the side here. Over this way to mark that. Make sure I get it all nice in line. Back to center. And back to the base. So I've just made a, a tree, if you would, of just by marking individual points. And the machine will stitch that out. So I've matched my tree down. So we're ready. We've got our whole block. There's our whole block. 
if you can see here, I'm going to just select, oops, yes I am. Got our whole block laid out. I'm going to go back to select and I'm going to select the entire block so that you can see how it's laid out. It's going to start here and it's going to end right where we finished starting because it's going to record or stitch exactly in the order we, we were doing this. So we're going to go ahead and stitch this out. Now we're ready to continue on with our next block. Now, the tree this time has been rotated 45 degrees. So I'm going to have to trace off my area again and then rotate my saved block design to fit into it. So we're just going to go ahead and go to my, uh, area, multi-point, and I'm just going to trace off my entire block again, just like normal. So now I have my block traced off. I now have my block traced off. It's going to go into here. So the first thing we're going to do, however, is I'm going to rotate this. So we can click on rotate and we're just going to go 45, 45. So it's actually 90 degree turn. So we're going to go ahead and put this into the pocket here by going skew and border skew. And it's all set and ready to go. So I can stitch my next block. Now you can build the blocks and do your whole board or your whole row and just completely repeat this again. So I could go ahead and select the next one because it's going to be vertical. And I could continue on because can you see this here? If I do this, you'll see I've got two, two blocks there that it's already going to do. So I've got to delete this first one because I don't want to have that in there. So I'm going to go edit and we're just going to cut that out. So now we just have the one selected block to do. So we're ready to go through and stitch our next block. This was a fun quilt to make and quilt. When you get to your second border on the opposite side, simply choose modify, rotate, flip vertical, and align to complete your quilt. So let your creative juices go, do what you like to do, and remember, it's only wrong when it doesn't work. Make sure you download today's handout on all the tips, tricks, and techniques we covered.